behind this morning. But um, uh, we are happy to have you here this morning. And this is John Perkins Bible Study. Today is November 30th, um, 2021. We have about uh, just uh, one more month in, in this year. And um, we're just so happy to be here and, and so happy to have you join us this morning. And if you're here for the first time, we want to say a special welcome to you. Um, we're doing our Advent um, lesson um, for the next four weeks. And, um, and we want to open this morning with a word of prayer. And um, I want to ask um, a dear friend of ours, um, Alex Mendez, if you're on, would you open us in a word of prayer, please? I'd love to. Can you hear me? Yes. Father, we come before you thankful for these two saints and uh, many of the others that have given up the time to hear your word and to contemplate it together. So then, Lord, um, while we've prepared, we pray that you would bring down the fire to transform our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank yeah. you so much, Alex. Um, amen. Chris, do you have any announcements for us I today? I do. First, first, thank you for praying for my mom. We thought that she might have had a stroke, but apparently it was a urinary tract infection, which is, it seems to mimic strokes. This is our third time with uh, kind of a false alarm. So thank you. She's on antibiotics and doing much better. Um, we will be taking a little break from uh, December 21st and the 28th. We'll just break right there before and after Christmas to give everyone a chance to spend time with family and clean up the messes that people like me make. And uh, we're looking forward to, to that time with family. So just note, we will not be we will not be on the call on those two Tuesdays. And don't forget today is Giving Tuesday. And uh, after you give to your church, consider, consider supporting uh, Perkins Foundation and maybe posting that on your Facebook page. That's it. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, uh, JP and Dr. Van der Ark, you guys uh, talked about Advent um, as we prepare for this lesson. And um, many times there are, uh, you know, young people who, are, who may be listening who don't really understand what that, what that is, what that, what that means. Okay, I'm so, I'm over driven by passion. I'm going to call that competitive passion. Now, there might be a little something wrong with that. It might be that I'm passionate because I want to be I can't say better because better is knowing God better. So it's not being better than you, but it's, it better comes from God because he's the seat of knowing. He's the seat of knowing. He responds to us. What we're talking here about in the great here is loving each other more. The, the, the orthodox of orthodox is knowing God and making him known. The first knowing God the way we know him was to know him in the incarnation to know him as we are known. Now to know him as he is known is what makes him God. And then to know each other. I think you might have a hand on something here, folks. I, I think we, we got a hand on something here. We're in a world now well, a lot of our weakness is coming out. God is revealing us. This pandemic has just turned black. This pandemic bringing out hate. When we don't want to take our shot and teach other people don't take your shot, that's pretty near hate. 
this disease will kill. Lord, the incarnation was that we might know God. He made us in his image. He made us to love one another. We can't do that adequate without knowing him. Go into all the world and share this good news of great joy to all people. That's our great commission. Oh, what go along with that is you shall receive power. You must receive power when the fullness of the Holy Spirit come upon you. Then you will share this love in Jerusalem, Judea. That's where they kill him at. That's where they kill him at. Out on a hill, far away, down an old rugged cross. It's a picture of suffering and shame. God loves us. The asset of that is to love one another. <laughs> Jesus said that. By this may all men know you're my disciple. Because of love. This day we are celebrating that. That's what the advance is. I'm going to let Dr. Van Art go on that. Advance. What is you asking me? Um, I was just, um, you, were, you were saying that Advent means arrival or expecting um, arrival, and our Advent is the arrival of, of, of Jesus. That's, yes. We're, that's we're, the, we're looking up to that point. That's the arrival of, I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. I was working on that in my thinking. Okay. <laughs> I was working on that. That moment when the angels said it, that, those moments, that the angels said it to the shepherds was the greatest news in the history of the world. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. He was going to be the express image of the invisible God. In him would dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And when we are in him, we're complete. Whoever said that was speaking prophetically. He would speak in only the words that the prophets had spoken. And so loving each other is what it's about. Now we find in ways to hate each other and to kill each other and making hate a value. We're not here to do that. We're here to give thanksgiving for that one who came those many years ago. Who the angels said, I bring you good news of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this night in the city of David. That's the event. That's the arrival. And we're here today for us as humans to celebrate. We're here as humans to celebrate that together. And, and could we establish a better thought as we think this morning of a depth of his love. Could we understand Psalm 1 this morning? Could we be like a tree planted by the waters 
that bring forth fruit in its season. His leaves shall not wither. And whatever we is prompt to do that he prompt us to do it, and we would prosper. Okay. Let's celebrate. Then I right, help us a little bit and then let's celebrate. Let, well, I am delighted. Hey, we, we don't want to think about who we can hate the best. Go ahead. Well, I'm delighted that Dr. Perkins has introduced celebration because for the Perkins family, celebration started yesterday because yesterday was a very important day in the Perkins family. Everyone needs to know that yesterday was Priscilla's birthday. So oh, we ought to all be singing and saying, happy birthday, Priscilla. Thank happy you. birthday, Priscilla. Thank you. You didn't have to be You thank you. Happy birthday, Priscilla. Thank you guys so much. Now the day after Priscilla's birthday, we can begin to celebrate Advent. Now Advent means coming. And that's what we are going to celebrate, the coming of our Savior. Yes. So today we're going to talk about how that was foretold and predicted in the Old Testament of the Bible. And then next week, we will continue our celebration of Advent by looking at an Advent carol. And that Advent carol is, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So I would invite you all this week to get out your carol books, get out your hymnals, and please look at O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And then on December 14, we'll have a real celebration because we are going to consider the Christmas carol Joy to the world. Dr. Perkins is an expert on joy, and we will spend the 14th of December at our Bible study talking about joy to the world. So today, let's look at what the Old Testament tells us about the coming of Jesus. Do you realize that there are more than 300 prophecies in the Old Testament that were fulfilled by the life of our Savior? Yes, these include prophecies that he was coming, prophecies about who he would be, prophecies about the circumstances surrounding his birth, and prophecies of what he would do during his life on earth. That is a lot of prophecies. And Jesus said to them, 
This is what I told you when I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Yes, that's found in Luke 24. Hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus, uh. many godly people from Moses to Malachi prophesied about the coming of the Messiah, the king who would deliver Israel. In fact, the prophets revealed so many details about the coming of Christ that it's difficult to believe that the people around him didn't recognize who Jesus was. But it's still like that today, isn't it? Despite all this evidence, many still refuse to acknowledge him. We know that Jesus was of Jewish descent and therefore was the seed of Abraham. Genesis 22 tells us that through Abraham's offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Christians believe Jesus is the fulfillment of this promise. And then in Isaiah chapter 11, we know that he is from the line of Jesse, the father of King David. We read a shoot will come from the stump of Jesse, from the roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will be on him. And then in Jeremiah 22, we know that he is from the line of King David. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. And then reaffirming that Jesus is from the line of King David, we have this prophecy from 2 Samuel chapter 7, which was actually spoken by Samuel to King David. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And then from the prophecy of Micah, chapter 5, we know that he was born into the tribe of Judah in the region of Ephrata, in the town of Bethlehem. We read, but you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will rule be the ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. And then in Isaiah chapter 7, we read that Jesus would be born from a virgin. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. 
the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and you will call him Emmanuel. The name Emmanuel means God with us and indicates that this baby would be divine. Then in Isaiah 9, we read the prophecy about the coming of Christ. To us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That Jesus would be worshipped by shepherds from the desert and that foreign kings would present gifts to him is re re revealed to us in Psalm 72. May the desert tribes bow before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him gifts. May all kings bow down to him and all nations serve him. When Jesus was born, King Herod slaughtered a number of children in an attempt to kill him. This is predicted in Jeremiah chapter 31. A voice is heard in Ramah, mourning and great weeping, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. In response to this attempt on the life of Jesus, Joseph is warned in a dream to take Jesus to Egypt where they stayed until Herod died. This was predicted in Hosea chapter 11. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. The ancient scriptures say that he would be a prophet. Deuteronomy 18. A priest. Psalm 110. And a king. Psalm 2. All these titles are attributed to Jesus in the pages of the New Testament. The prophets predicted that he would be preceded by a messenger, Malachi 3. John the Baptist showed that he clearly understood his own prophetic role when he said that he was not fit even to carry the sandals of the one who would come after him. That's in Matthew 3. The Messiah would minister in Galilee, Isaiah chapter 9, and perform miracles, Isaiah 35. He would be pierced, Zechariah 12. And his accusers would divide his garments among them, Psalm 22. It's easy to see the fulfillment of these prophecies in the life and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The greatest prophecy fulfilled. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. 
He is the Messiah, the Lord. That's Luke 2. This is best news in the world, causing the greatest joy of all time. Jesus came fulfilling hundreds of prophecies, proving that he was exactly who he said he was, our Savior. These, as well as other predictions about the Messiah, were recorded many centuries before Jesus' first advent. It should be obvious to anyone, as it was to the shepherds, that this baby lying in the manger was and is the chosen one of God. Many throughout history, from the original disciples to modern day martyrs, have suffered and died because they truly believe that Jesus fulfilled all of these ancient prophecies. We conclude this review of these ancient writings by marveling at them collectively. These biblical prophecies are astonishing because of their accuracy alone. Yet they become all the more astonishing when we consider the unlikelihood of all these prophecies being fulfilled. But they were. Peter Stoner, in his classic book, Science Speaks, calculated the chances of any man fulfilling these prophecies even down to the present time. He calculated it to be one in 10th in the 17th power. How can anyone think that Jesus just happened to be in the right place at the right time? It was not a coincidence. God in the flesh has already come down here. And we are looking forward and long for his return. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. We got a foundation here for our discussion. It's, it's, that Luke passage is so informing through the angels. Good news. Great joy. All people. What an expression at this point in history. Good news. That's the inspiration of the greatest love event in the history of the world. I was thinking about an expression that Mike could express that. And Noah tying that together. Why Noah is not there or why Noah is there in that line of those express people. I think it's there maybe because it says, and Noah found what it is. Noah found what can save us. is love and Noah 
found grace. Grace is extreme, can't get no better love. Grace is a absolute expression of human brokenness and human need. There is a mercy seat. There is a mercy seat. This is so beautiful in the prophets. How that the prophet was so clear. God who in son retired and in divers manner spoke unto the fathers in time past by the prophets. Having these last days, now too, now too. But here in these last days, now too, speaking to us by his son, whom he made his sons, whom he made heirs of all things, by whom also he made the world, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and we had by himself purged our sin, sit down at the right hand of the Father. I, we got something to thank God for. Just the truth of his word, just the truth of his word, just the truth of his word, just the truth of history. We, we could say, Noah was a drunkard. Why was he important? He found grace. Are y'all listening? Uh-huh. I'm, 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 I'm looking at, is that Tyler? Uh, uh, yes. You found grace. I'm looking at Van Hart up there too. He called himself saying something this morning. <laughs> what he found was, was grace. And a wretch like me. And a wretch like us. We got some, some joy here. We, 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 we ought to find some a new millennium. Oh, we are beautiful, beautiful lady <laughs> sleeping in your car. Found grace. We found grace. We got something to celebrate, don't we? Where do we go from here now? The celebration. Uh, you want to lead us? Uh, are we doing okay? Chris is there. Uh, uh, Chris, you want to lead us shortly? <laughs> I would be honored to. Into this as yes. a pastor. <laughs> as a pastor, could you lead us? In? I would be honored to. Speaking of grace. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll listen for each other. We'll yeah. listen uh, to each other. And we want to listen carefully to each other. We we want to listen carefully to what we've heard. Let's anchor it in the in in, in the prophets. I'm looking for something more in this time. I'm seeking to fill the air with some good news. We're fixing to make the vaccine now, Horatio. We finna we finna make the, racism is a lie. All human beings was created equal. White folks was created just as good as me. White folks was created just as good as me. I'm glad to have you, Ben Art. 
as a brother. I'm glad I can play with you. Hallelujah. I'm glad we can play with each other. Amen. We have to be glad. I, I don't want to be blacker than you, uh, Taylor. I don't want to be blacker than you. Okay. I don't want to be brighter than you. I like you. Why are we using all of that garbage? Why are we using all of that racist stuff? That was made up. That was made up. How did Noah's grandson and all of Noah's children is white and a grandson turned black? And he got to serve the whites the rest of his life. We need to hear the scripture. I got some scripture. We need to hear the scripture. We need to hear this together. We need to read our Bible. Amen. Okay, go ahead. All right, thank you, JP. I, I was waiting for you to take a breath because you're, you're, you're... <laughs> trying to hear that word. <laughs> So, so is, is when I was preaching, I would always write on my sermon notes, so what? So when I hear Dr. Gary go through all of these prophecies, I'm thinking, so what? Right? So this is wonderful. It's confirming. And then as we're talking and we remember that to us, a son is given, not just to a few people, but to everyone, a son is given. Not, not to white people only or black people only or brown but to everyone, Jew and Gentile, slave and free, everyone. And if there's, listen, everyone look at me for one second here. Everyone look at the screen. If there's two pain points in life that I've experienced as a pastor, it's two, there's two pain points. The inability to have children and the death of a child. Those are the two most significant losses people experience. The inability to have children or the loss of a child. Nothing brings more grieving and deep pain than the pain surrounding children, right? Uh, we drove to Arizona two weeks ago to be with our neighbors who lost their daughter, 22, who was hit by a car on the freeway getting helping a motorist. And the wailing that we heard. And then the prophecy is, to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given. And God is saying, I can identify because I'm going to send my son to die for you. And all of us will have a child. Everyone, the barren woman, will have a son. And all of us will experience the loss. And, and, and God is saying, I can experience every deep pain you can feel, I can feel. Why, why was Jesus baptized? I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine? This is a little satire. Jesus walking by John the Baptist and John saying, I'm baptizing. And Peter saying, Jesus, you're going to get baptized. And Jesus says, no, I haven't done anything wrong. You know, I'm, I don't need to repent. No, but Jesus tells John, I must be baptized by you. It must be fulfilled. I must identify with sinners. And God identifies with us. He gives us a son. Every barren woman has a son. Everyone who's lost a son who, who a child can say, a God can relate to us. He has, he has made it clear. He didn't just fly a banner behind a plane over the beach saying, I love you. God proves his love for us in this. This prophecy has been fulfilled. And, and so for all of us that have experienced loss, so has God. So has our father. And, and he gave us his son. We can't separate Christmas from Easter, can we? We can't separate the two. We can't separate the birth from the cross. And God knew all along that he would be able to mourn with us and understand our pain and grieve and, and lament. But also, as Dr. Perkins pointed out, looking forward to the unbroken relationships in heaven, looking forward to the restoration of all things, looking forward to reconciliation with those that have gone before us, even to the little babies that, were, that, were, that died in, as stillborns. God will reconcile all things to himself and heaven will be the end of separation and the end of death and the end of pain and the end of tears. And, and he announced that end was coming by the birth of his son. 
And so to everyone lamenting today, Jesus's prophecy is the sign of God saying, I'm going to put an end to this pain. And it was announced, and that is Dr. Gary laid it out, it was announced and it was fulfilled. And we have confidence that what we're hoping in will not disappoint us. Amen. Amen. Uh, and let, let's get the old prophet here, see if he got in the same say, and then we'll open it up. You mean Ross Well, <laughs> it is Ron How do we all know Spann. it? We, we all knew it was Ron Span. The cannon. The cannon. <laughs> let's, let's hear from the cannon, and then we will open it up. Uh, Chris, if, if, if uh, not Chris. Ron, I'm the little Curtis. cannon, Dr. Perkins. I'm the little cannon. You're, you're a big cannon. cannon. You're a little cannon. You're a little cannon. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but look, you didn't miss fire. This morning. <laughs> you didn't miss fire. <laughs> okay. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> I can't go, I can't say anything without mentioning first that uh, when I heard Gary Van der Ark say Messiah, 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 I said, now here is a Dutch American, true to the bone. Because all my good Christian reform friends in Grand Rapids, Michigan, would come down to Church of the Messiah in Detroit, where I was pastor. And we said, Messiah. But the Christian reform people from Grand Rapids said, Messiah. And that's all I heard this morning from Gary. And I just lit up like a Christmas tree bulb. I am so delighted to make that reconnection again. Thank you, Gary. Uh, I am just arrested by what. Uh, JP has shared with us about the angelic proclamation. Good news, great joy, all people. Good news, great joy, all people. Uh, we, we can't outdo God. Uh, we can't outdo God's love. And um, I think that's... Uh, what is touching me most in the last many days. Uh, I'm just looking back at all the friends, uh, people, um, I had someone called over Thanksgiving weekend and Dan and Sherry Bandrowski, uh, some good CCDA people here in Detroit. And they said, Ron, if you have a minute, we just wanna spend some time with you. And to me, that's the incarnation. That's the word coming among us the word who was always going to come and take flesh uh, because he wanted to be Emmanuel, wanted to be God with us. And I can't turn around except there's not somebody celebrating and just, it's all gifts. Ron, I just, we, we'd just like to spend some time with you. And it was in my message box on the phone. I didn't know it was there. I didn't come across it until late in the weekend when it was almost too late to take him up, but I'm gonna call him anyway because I don't want to miss the taste of that grace. And uh, uh, Catherine of Siena a long time ago said, it's heaven all the way to heaven and hell all the way to hell. I, I don't want to miss that taste of heaven on the way to heaven of, of those who so graciously and spontaneously offer love. That's where I want to be. And, and you all are helping me get there. That's, that's why I need these Tuesday mornings. Amen. Curtis, are you there? Curtis. Is I, Cur thought, I thought he was on. Is Curtis on? I didn't want to neglect him in any way because that has been our order. And uh, Curtis? Um, he, he didn't respond to my text, so, Um I know that uh, that that we have others who would like to um, share as well. Yeah, we, we, I'm going to do it, but I didn't want to, because we've been doing that so neatly, you how know. About, uh, but, how about Matt Magoo, because, Pastor Matt? Oh, Pastor Matt. Oh, you, hey, Pastor Matt. Where's Pastor Matt? He's hey, guys. There. Hey, it's been a minute. Good to be back with you all on this uh, Tuesday morning. And love you all, and it's good to see so many familiar faces, and greetings from Atlanta. Wow, good to see you. And it is Giving Tuesday, so let's be generous for this Perkins Foundation. That's always a good reminder. And 
you know, my, my heart is full just hearing these prophecies fulfilled. And, you know, there's a little bit of difference between a prediction and a prophecy, right? So a prediction, like Saturday, I made a prediction that the Ohio State Buckeye team was going to beat Michigan. And I'm not a prophet, obviously, because my prediction was wrong. <laughs> and prophets, when they are here from the Lord and they speak on behalf of the Lord, when the prophet speaks, it's always true because God is always true. So there's a difference between predicting something and prophesying something. And so, man, thank God for those Old Testament prophets that gave us solid truth that Jesus was coming, the Messiah was coming. So I rest in that truth. And that just uh, fills my heart this morning. Great teaching. Thank you all for that. Yeah, I noticed that the um, the uh, prophecy, um, the prophecies were more accurate than any lottery. You know, it was one in 17, is it tri batrillion? I couldn't figure that, that number out. It's a lot more than a trillion. Yeah. Yeah, this is, well, we celebrate that. We're celebrating the truth of the good news, the joy of the good news, and the thanksgiving for each other that he gave himself for all of us, all people. I like that. All people. He gave himself for all people. You know, what can wash away my sin, your sin, the Italian sin, <laughs> the minorities. I love the minorities. The minorities. I love the minorities. I don't know who they are. I, I don't know why we hate them. I don't know why we hate them. I love the minorities. Somebody needs to love the minorities. So, uh, let's, 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 let's talk about it. How about uh, Phil and Marcia? Are you guys ready to jump in? For me? Phil and Marcia Phil and Reed. Mar Vera Mays, Pastor. Yeah. Thank you all. Everybody right. got a pastor around here this morning. Yeah, they. <laughs> I, I didn't see him. I, I didn't see him. Hey, guy, well, you got something to say? You do you have anything to say that you haven't said to me? <laughs> uh, I think the joy. You know, I'm just over filled with overflown with joy. You know, joy. Joy is a uh, confidence in the midst of conflict. Not 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 uh, avoiding conflict. You know, we try to be happy by avoiding tough situations, but joy faces the tough situation. And boy, we need it more than ever today in Jackson and other places of all the strife, all the violence we've got, but joy looks at all that violence and hopes anyway, and has, and has confidence in the future. Uh, so, I needed this message this morning of joy uh, because of what Jesus did to us. He entered into our pain and he had victory and that's where joy comes from. And so thank you, Dr. Van der Ark for your message for me this morning. Mm. Yeah, we've been Keep saying, going. We've Let's celebrate. It, it's open. Uh, 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 courtesy and calm. So it's open now. To, to, to share a word. To either raise your share hand. Share your joy. Melinda, you got something you want to add? Yes, thank you. Um, I was just thinking about uh, Emmanuel, God being with us. Me and too. that, and were you, you know, just a reminder that He is with us. It doesn't matter what we go through, what we experience. And that he's not just with us when things are going good, but he is with us always. And then even, you know, I was thinking at Ephesians uh, 3 and 18, that, that we will be able to really grasp how high, 
how wide, how deep, and how long his love is. To really grasp that means to hold on to that. I was thinking this morning, Dr. Perkins came on and David Burleson was saying how we come together here as friends, how we come to love each other, how we come to come to know each other. So it, I, I think for me, I was just thinking, Emmanuel, that I'm with you always, no matter where you are and what you experience. Amen. Amen. I love yeah, it. Hey, he he loved the Hispanic. He loved the Hispanic. I like him too. Ellen, could you say a word to us? You prayed for us. Alex Mendez. Mendez. He gone? Uh, let's see if he's still on. That's all right. Yeah, he's gone. Oh, he's the gone. San Antonio yeah. rep representative. Um. Uh, we have uh, Mary's hand up there. How are you doing this morning? Good, good. Um, it's a good news and great joy to all of us, not only um, uh, the day of Christmas or the month of Christmas, but it should be always. It's a great joy and good news to us. And also we need to share that good news and joy with everyone that come across. Seek the opportunities to seek the good news to uh, share that good news and great joy as we received it. And I would like to read a Bible verse for all of us. It's in Colossians chapter two, verse six. And this is a, like somebody's, I think Chris, oh, somebody said that we should not separate Christmas and Easter. So this I'm going to talk to you about as you, uh, I'm going to read to you about as you therefore have received Christ to Jesus the Lord. So walk in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. So that's what we need to do. Since we have received the good news and great joy, we need to walk in him with faith and also thanksgiving to him for he has given up his son for us to die on the cross for us. That is the good news and great joy. That's what we should be walking in every day. That's what I have for us today. Thank you so much. Um, it's, it's so reassuring to know that um, God is with us and that we should um, be thanking him each and every day from um, Christmas all through the year. So, um, It's prayer time. Yes, it surely is. Uh, Melinda. Yes, I was thinking this morning, looking at us as we've come together. And so I'm going to ask if I, I'm going to pass the baton. I'm going to ask this morning if Pastor Matt McGew, if you would pray and then Mary Gobin, if you would, you would close us and then we'll hand it back to, to uh, Dr. Vander Art. Yes, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that uh, we call you Father. We call you Abba. Uh, our, our father in heaven. So thank you, God, that we're all your children. And Lord, we, uh, we thank you that you love us uh, each the same, Lord, and more than we could ever love one another. Lord, uh, thank you for that father's love. You're a good, good father. And Lord, we bask in that today. In fact, we thank you for giving up your only son, Jesus, for us. And what greater news there is. It's the greatest news. Thank you, Father, for that that gives us the great joy we've been talking about today. So Lord, thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you for friendship. Thank you, God, for just fellowship and camaraderie. Thank you, God, for how you inspire us as we see one another on this screen and share these moments together. God, this is, uh, this is precious. This is meaningful. Yeah. So God, thank you that you can use this technology to accomplish what you want. Your will uh -huh. is, is what we desire. And we pray even what John the Baptist prayed that less of me and more of you, that I must decrease and you must increase. So God, let that be our mantra this month as we uh, approach through this Advent season and with great expectation of what Jesus means to each of us. So thank you for my brothers and sisters. And we just pray a blessing on each here in Jesus name. Amen. Mary, go in, would you pray for us and then we'll Turn it over to us. Sure. Father, thank you 
for your love and your mercy and grace on all of us. Not only that are here on the line, but also the whole world. You sent your son to die, but to rise again, to go again, so that we can have a risen savior. Thank you for the forgiveness of all of our sins. He took our sins on our behalf and he doesn't remember them no more. Not only that, he sent his helper, the Holy Spirit that lives within us. Just like we were discussing about Emmanuel with us. We thank you and praise you that you are with us and in us. You are with us and in us in our good times, in our troubles, according to Psalm 91. And you will help us, whatever situation we have in. Thank you for bringing unity among this group that we have every Tuesday. We come together as brothers and sisters in the Lord, as children of God. What a privilege it is to hear the word of God, to meditate on the word of God, like Dr. Perkins was saying, whose leaf shall not wither, whatever he does shall prosper. So we thank you that you are blessing us to prosper in the word of God. We thank you and praise you for this day that you have given to us. Help, Help us to have this mind always in Hi, you Grandma. so we can go forth. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dr. Vander, give us a close, closing benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 What a beautiful blessing. And I, I'm, just, I'm counting on that blessing, Dr. Van der Ark. So uh, thank you all for joining us this week, and we'll see you next week for our part two of our Advent um, lesson. And thank you so much, JP and um, ben, Dr. Vendor Ark and, um, and Chris for the wonderful lesson that you gave us today and for each one sharing. We're going to continue our conversation. And uh, those of you who have to go, it's definitely okay. Don't feel bad about it. But we're going to continue this conversation and, and going to talk about um, uh, uh, about this Advent season and what we have learned here today. And also, um, as we enter into this season of um, hurrying around, um, spending, and, uh, and getting off course, but also there, there are a lot of people who at this time might um, get a little depressed during Christmas season. I, I, I've always saw, you know, the holiday season is all happy, happy, but, you know, I, I've noticed that there, there are many people who don't see it that way. And especially as people get older, lose loved ones, um, uh, holidays become more and more difficult. So um, if you want to share any burdens that you are carrying right now, um, we want to help um, wash your wounds and help carry your burdens with you. So um, anyone want to want to share um, anything that they um, well, and it, it, this this time is open. Happy birthday, Priscilla. Thank you, Mill. Yeah, happy birthday. Yes, it was a um, uh, it was a marathon birthday. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Thanks a bunch. Wow. Hey Priscilla, <clears throat> I'll, I'll jump in and, and just want this one. I'd appreciate prayer um, for a family here, a very poor family. Um, the disabled in, in Africa are not treated well at all. 
um, they're actively persecuted, their um, schools can stop disabled kids from going to school. And one of the families that we work with um, who lost a disabled child uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, their four-year-old daughter died Friday. Um, and what makes what so gut-wrenching is not one church in the community where she lived would agree to host the funeral and not one pastor would show up. But what was so beautiful was that all the other moms who had disabled children and fathers who had disabled children came and stood with this family. Um, and I was asked to conduct the graveside burial service um, which was the only, what they wanted was a church funeral. And the church said no, uh, the church has said no. Um, and just, it was an amazing experience to be able to stand with families who've known so much grief and pain and for them to be able to celebrate the four years that this little girl had, um, despite the difficulties, but it's just really be praying. Um, the mom's name is Jeanne. And the father's name is Jean de Dieu. Um, so it really, and just for those of us that are trying to support and encourage them would be great. Oh, wow. Thanks for sharing that. Culture captivity is, is so real. Um, we get set in our ways and, and, and many are, uh, can be very destructive. So we'll be praying for Jean and, um, Don real real John and uh, Jean de Dieu, if you see friends. So basically Jean and John. Okay. Uh, that that'll right. work. That'll that that'll work. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, anyone else care to share before we move on to a different topic? Because I, I got something else I've got to talk about. Uh, Elizabeth, you look like you're raring to share something. No, I'm anxious to see what the new topic is. Uh, and Ms. Francis, are you um, wearing to share something? Because I want to make sure that we take care of each other. Uh, no, I'm waiting to hear the new topic as well. All right, well. right. See, so <laughs> you, you teased us, and so we're, yeah. we're, we're waiting. My, my mother, she taught us how to do that. You know, Good News Club? Yeah, she yeah. Would yeah. The next, she would just uh, tease us and make us want to know what's going to happen in the next lesson. But, um, Bob, oh, Bob. Uh, Bob DeMoss, you have something to say? Or uh, Gina, is that Gina? Oh, I think she's talking to uh, someone. <laughs> Her hand was up. Um, I just have a prayer request. And okay. Yeah, you our oldest that. son, Josh, he's 16. Um, he's been a cancer survivor since he was five. Um, has a reoccurrence at the age of 16. Uh, so um we find out more in a couple weeks we go back um but it's tough it's tough on the kids his brother and sister and um so it could be more severe this time we're worried about that but uh god delivered him the last time a miracle and so we know that uh that uh, he'll do it again so i just if i could keep that let, let, in let, would someone pray for Right and, now, and, and, Andy, will you pay for him? Will you pay for Lou and his son and, and their family? We want to share that with you. Thank you. Pastor Andy. Sure. Yep. Yeah. What's your son's name? Josh. Joshua. Josh. Yeah. Father God, we come before you this very morning and we cry out to you in your mercy and your grace. Would you help Josh? Uh, would you come alongside this family? Give them the powerful uh, comfort of your presence, first and foremost, God, that you are with them, that you see them, that you see the suffering, and you know their agony and pain. God, I ask for miracles. We ask for healing. We ask, God, that you would do, again, the, um, what seems impossible, maybe in human perspective. God, we know that you are able, you are capable. Uh, I pray that the family would trust in your love, uh, even during this time of sorrow and fear, and uh, just, uh, yeah, just so intense, God. So we ask you, God, to protect this young one, help him, 
uh, and help the doctors to have insight, wisdom, but God, move your miraculous hand just in your mercy and grace and, and help this family and sustain them during this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Um, Lou, the word for you is Emmanuel. Yeah, that really resonated today. I, I wanted to say something, but I was just struggling. I, uh, I yeah. try not to think about it, but we've, uh, we appreciate we you all. Why, <clears throat> yeah, and we know why you named him Joshua. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. so he, 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 he's up for this battle. Yeah, uh, thank we'll, you. We'll be praying. Thank you. Um, anyone else care to share? I would like prayer for my 12 year old granddaughter, Victoria, who was born disabled 12 years ago. <clears throat> she is in Miami's Children's Hospital right now. And tomorrow she's undergoing a, a major operation, which she may not live through. Um, she has not spoken a word. She can smile and laugh but she, she can't stand up, she can't talk, but she's been a source of joy in the family. Uh, her name is Victoria. Her, she has surgery tomorrow <clears throat> in uh, Children's Hospital in Miami. And uh, I appreciate your prayers for the successful operation on her back, which is like the letter S and her back has to be cut. So <clears throat> it's a long, difficult procedure. Thank you. Somebody pray. Somebody uh, pray for Bob's granddaughter. Milt, would you would you um, pray for Victoria, little Victoria? Happy to do that. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Victoria, we we lift our prayers in your behalf, and on behalf of those who love you most, we pray that this delicate operation that you're about to undergo. Will, will result in and will accomplish what it is intended to do. We thank you for your life and your joy that you brought to this family of yours. And, and may you continue to have that ability by a successful surgery. Be with the surgeon and all the people who are involved in the surgery. Lord, we, we know that you love her and and we pray that you will accomplish what needs to be done tomorrow yes lord, yes, lord. Yes, lord. Yes, lord. amen thank, thank you. you so much thank, thank you. you amen i i see um our good friend gina how are you doing gina uh, good to see you here back again this hey, morning hey priscilla i'm i'm great i'm wonderful happy birthday again to you yeah. Um, yeah, I do have, <clears throat> excuse me, I do have a prayer request. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I have a daughter who's 29. Her name's Cassie. Um, experienced a fair amount of hurt and anger through her growing up years. Um, recently has pretty much ceased communicating and speaking with me. So I was talking with a, um, a good Christian friend of mine here in St. Louis who was sharing that she went through something similar with her daughter some years back. And she said, she just really went to God and said, God, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, bring her around. And I said, her name's Carrie. I said, Carrie, I've had that thought, but I haven't quite gotten the courage I think we lost uh, Gina, maybe her Wi-Fi. Um, okay, sorry. Um, I said I haven't quite gotten the <clears throat> courage to pray that prayer because that's scary. When you say whatever it takes, bring this person around. Um, so I think my first prayer request is for my courage <laughs> to really go to God and, and tell him whatever. She is a seven-year-old child. She's a single mom. Um, but, and then secondly, that God would heal whatever 
needs to be healed in her spirit and in her heart because um, she <clears throat> she is hurting. I do know that. Wow. And her her name is Cassie K A S I. Um, so yeah. We'll, we'll um, definitely be praying for Kathy. Um, uh, a Bible verse that I want to give you today, which has been given to me, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. Um, God has a plan for Kathy. And Amen. Amen. And, um, so, um, and the courage is, um, is all you need. Think about Abraham and his son. Yes. God asked him to do. What you got to do is minuscule com compa in comparison. Uh, Thank you. Give it, give it to the Lord. That's my mom used to say. You got to just give it, give it to the Lord. You know, but really, that's that's a reality. It is much harder done um, than it said. But um, yes. but it's so true. And and God believe that God will take care of Cassidy. He has her name carved. He has her face carved into his hand. Amen. Okay. Amen. Yes, he does. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's good to see everyone. Uh, any, any, anyone else before I change this subject? We got a little bit more time. Don't y'all want to hear that the next subject? Priscilla? Yes. This is, this is Mary. I just want to ask all of you to pray for India, South India, for the floods that still continue to rain and pray for that but for the lady that just spoke for her i was going to say jeremiah 29 11 that he has a future and a hope so his future and hope are greater than what we can give to our children so it is okay to pray with whatever you could do to get her to you is okay because he has a future not to harm us but give us a hope and a future god's hope and future is that he died for us and rose again, he will not harm her. So it's okay to pray whatever you can. So that's what I, I want to strengthen her this morning to pray like that. Amen, amen. And it's greater than ours. I love what you said. His, his plan, his, his, his um, hope is, um, the, the hope that he has is, is his plan is greater than ours. Uh, we can't even imagine what, what God could have planned, you know? So, uh, that's it's just amazing to think um, that if we uh, surrender in that way, that um, he has a, a plan for us. So, um, Priscilla, now I want, yes. Yeah, I, I, I want to uh, put in a request for Kevin Stephanie, who is normally on the call. He went into the hospital on Saturday with and has had emergency surgery uh, with a, a bowel obstruction. And so um, <clears throat> to be praying for him, you know, normally he would be on the call. Um, and I don't know that he's been released from the hospital yet, but uh, to be praying for him as well. Wow, that is painful. Um, I, I had that, I, I just dropped to my, I, I dropped, it's one of those like you drop to your knees, that's the kind of pain it is. And it just mm -hmm. comes out of nowhere. So, um, oh boy, I, I just, uh, um, hope that he's getting some some relief and they're able to get that obstruction done. So uh, we'll be praying for for Kevin and um, hope to see him in the near future. But we'll definitely keep him on our prayer list. Um, anyone else? Okay, so I want to ask um, about um, traditions that. Um, each of you have during this Christmas season. Uh, are there any uh, particular traditions that you had growing up that you wish you had now that you enjoyed so much um, before and that you wish that you had now? Can anybody remember any that you that you had? Hey, Priscilla. Uh, does yeah. anyone know what happened to Doug Gentry? We haven't Gentile. seen him. Gentile? He, we haven't seen him in a while. Oh. Um, you know, it seems like I, I got an email from him, but I, I can I can reach out to him and check. 
Um, yeah, if you I, would, please let us know. We've been praying yeah, for him. Yeah, um, yeah, I got an email yesterday, so. Um, all right, yeah, so so I will, uh, I will, I'll, I'll reach out and let him know we miss him and that you ask about him. So um, any any um, holiday traditions that you you had that that uh, anybody care to share? Don't be afraid. If you if you uh, if you if you used to do something that you kind of a little bit embarrassed about, it, it, it's not anything that uh, probably we haven't done in this Perkins uh, family somewhere along the lines. Uh, Priscilla. Yeah. Uh, the Christmas tradition for my family is to give others than to receive. That's been a, uh, uh, and then my parents passed and we still continue to give others than to receive. That's the important thing during the Christmas time. So God has blessed us to do that, to take care of others that are in the church and in the neighborhood. Okay and uh, neighborhoods for needy, needy people. And the clothing, the food and stuff like that during Christmas time. That's a good one. Did your, did your children grow up doing that? We did. My children are doing that. Yes, but they did. Did they enjoy doing that when they were kids? <laughs> when they're kids, they did, but they're not doing it. And one of them does, one of them does. I can... Right. No, I take that back because the other one does it too. The other one that doesn't do in Christmas time, but does it all all year long. The one that does not want to serve God, but does it all year long. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so it's a different, you know, for her, it's different now. She changed her uh, belief in God. She doesn't believe in God anymore. And, and yeah. so up. Yeah, she, but uh, she still does the thing that giving up the poor. She still does, but it's a year long, not one day. That's not a, you know when I would see. That's a that's a great great tradition um, to have. I know as a as a kid, we would hate it when our parents would would change up things on Christmas. Uh, when they would decide that you know this is one Christmas that we're gonna um, we're gonna just. Um, uh, do we're not going to do Christmas uh, because we're going to think about you know the poor we were like we were kids you know we didn't understand but but now I get it you know I, I understand what they were trying to teach us but but it was um you know as a child you're like I, I, I want to have Christmas I want to make so Elizabeth and I we would um we would just would go around the house and and just find things and uh get some paper bags and we would just wrap gifts and, and, and um, take them all up and put them under the tree.